This is Josephine Gibbs reading William Shakespeare sonnet number 31. Thy bosom is endeared with all hearts, which I, by lacking, have supposed dead, and there reigns love and all love's loving parts, and all those friends which I had thought buried. How many a holy and obsequious tear has dear religious love stolen from mine eye? As interest of the dead which now appear, but things removed that hidden in thee lie. Thou art the grave where buried love dost live, hung with the trophies of my lovers gone, who all their parts of me to thee did give. The dew of many now is thine alone. Their images are loved, I view in thee, and thou all they hast all the all of me. Sonnet number 31 by Shakespeare is one of those frustrating sonnets that defied any explanation or analysis because it seems to me that Shakespeare uh, perhaps try to confound future analysis of his work. However, I will endeavour to do my best with this humble uh, postulations or uh, guesses of what uh, Shakespeare's Sonnet 31 could mean. First of all, I want to say the, the poem in, in today's speak, today's modern word speak. Uh, you were dear to friends of mine who I'm pretty sure are dead because I haven't seen them or received their love in a long time. But the love they gave me and I gave them has not died. It lives on in your heart. I cried many holy and respectful tears at the funerals of these friends. But I am grateful that their love and kindness are reflected in you. You are the grave that contains the still vibrant love of these varied friends. Now I give you the love that I once gave them. All that love is now yours alone. I see the images of my varied friends in you, and you can count on receiving all the attention that I once gave to them. So the strongest literary device used here is when they also use words and phrases like, their range, love, and all love's loving parts, trophies of my love is gone, you used in the cynic the key of the visual trophy to represent the loss of friends appreciated only after they are gone and buried that are now embodied in the loved one. So the historical intrusion is, is also this one here. This is that uh, the images are loved and love in a view in thee. That is his preoccupation with his love has distracted him and that uh, he valued his friends and his regard for them was encapsulated in the object of his affection. The current one. Analogy was also used in the use of, of the concepts of ideas in how many a holy obsequious tear has dear religious love stolen from an eye. So how many of these, uh, the, the tears that is being spelt during funerals of these friends. So these lines are almost quite uh, resentful of the time when they, and he felt the, keenly the loss of these friends. So. These uh, two lines, these lines actually encapsulate the whining and the whinging element in Sonnet 31. The poet has a very resentful voice for everything that he has regretted or has even taken uh, taken his attention. Um, he only just recognised these once after the fact, when he knew that his um, beloved is truly the one deserving of these attentions, of these sort of... Um, uh, delicacy of feeling that he used to to uh, give and, and shower on his friends. Um, in this uh, sonnet, hyperbaton or chiasmos, the, this idea of the attribution of human-like qualities or the way that the author plays a regular positioning of words and phrases that creates a different structured sentence to convey the same meaning. It is said that by using a hyperbait on words or prices overstep their conventional placements and result in a more complex and intriguing intriguing sentence structure, as in thou art the grave where buried love dost live, because it's almost a contradiction in terms. Um, the grave spoke of things that was rejected and denied, but now chiasmic in the way the inversion of grave that buried love that lives. It's too complex to be believed in the use of these uh, words. 
Um, there's also inversion here is in the interest of the dead, which now appears but things removed that hidden in the lie. This ambiguity in the two lines illustrate how far you can push the inversion of meaning as the dead will have no interest in anything and nothing could appear at all if they are hidden. The author suspects that his beloved is lying or hiding something perhaps. Uh, epithet is also the literary device used as in uh, the bosom is endeared with hearts which I by lacking has supposed it dead. Parasity is usually used to, to add to a place or a regular name or attributing some special quality to this. Bossum having the hearts that the, the, the author now lack these feelings is because they're all gone. Um, a sentiton was also quite used as well in this uh, sonnet, which refers to the practice in literature where right, the author purposely leaves that conjunctions in the sentence to shorten it, to make it more succinct as in when he did this, when he wrote this, and there reigns love and all love's loving parts. There is no conjunction here. Perhaps Anne is the only one, but there are so much more that are missing. The use of voice in the sonnet is that the feelings and opinions expressed in a sonnet or any other poem do not necessarily present those of the author. And what makes this really confusing is that he seems to be speaking not about himself, but a lot about his beloved. He's almost like a reflection uh, on behalf of his beloved. Consequently, when writing about Shakespeare's sonnet or another autumn, the critics and scholars um, talks about the voice of the poem as a speaker or the persona. Either the term can be referring to Shakespeare himself or to a real or fictional person representing the lines. So Shakespeare might have written it, but actually he might have actually represented some people, people or inspiration for this, uh, these sonnets, especially specifically Sonnet 31. And this ends the my interpretation. Uh, forgive, forgive me if I had made any errors or uh, rub you the wrong way in my interpretation or uh, postulations. Uh, speculations or what these the meanings of these um, sonnets could mean. Um, thank you very much for listening to this video and take care.